Today's message is, is a different, a little different than what my messages usually are. Usually I like to take a, a passage of scripture and go through it and uh, just see what we find in that particular passage. Today, uh, this message is what is called topical. I've got a topic in mind. And uh, that's what I'm going to talk about. And, uh, and I'm going to bring some scriptures, of course, to uh, bear into our discussion. Uh, I'm going to tell you up front, I'm not feeling all that well today. Yeah, that might be a good thing for you because it might, you might get out earlier. <laughs> but it puts more responsibility on you to listen. Can you help me out here? Um, really focus in and, and uh, try to um, stay with me in my wanderings. And as I try to uh, bring a message to you that I think is very important uh, to the church today. Not just our church, the church, Christ's body. The topic, uh, what we're going to talk about today is handling disagreements within the body of Christ. How do we go about handling disagreements in the body of Christ? First and foremost, uh, as we approach this subject, uh, there must be a commitment in all of us to God's word. This is, uh, this is God's word. Second Timothy tells us that all scripture is inspired by God. It is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. So, we're going to assume from the start that uh, as we approach disagreements, uh, and I'm thinking mainly uh, doctrinal disagreements, in the church, we're going to assume from the start that, that each party uh, has a commitment to this as God's holy revealed word. Now, sometimes these disagreements can take a, a pretty serious turn. Uh, as in the Galatian church, where the, uh, Paul had preached to the Galatians the beautiful a message of God's forgiveness, salvation by faith through grace, uh, by grace through faith, and what the work that Christ had done for us on the cross. And people were coming into that church afterwards saying, that's all good. But you need to add to that this. And then they were bringing in uh, 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 various uh, rules and regulations that they were comfortable with and trying to make that part of this salvation package. And Paul responded to that in Galatians 1, verses 8 and 9. Listen to this. Even though we are an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to that which we have preached to you, let him be accursed. As we, as we have said it before, so I say it again now. If any man is preaching to you a gospel contrary to that which you receive, let him be accursed. Uh, there are disagreements that come up from time to time that uh, where there's no room for accommodation because the truth of the gospel needs to uh, remain pure, and clear, because it's the hope of the world. And if we're not, if we don't have a clear gospel to present, um, the hope is diminished. We've, there are some things that there's just, uh, there's no room for accommodation. but. There are disagreements within the church, 
doctrinal disagreements on a whole host of issues where there is they don't they don't apply to our relationship how we become related to God how we receive his salvation but they're important questions uh, they need to be taken seriously uh, but uh, our attitude toward the person that we're uh, having a disagreement with is far more important than who's right in, this, in the disagreement. Um, I want to read um, Romans 14th chapter, just a couple of verses here. One man regards one day above another. Okay, we had a disagreement. We have some disagreements in the Roman church. Somebody thinks, Wow, Sabbath is it. Somebody thinks, no, all days are holy. Somebody thinks that you have to, re to uh, maintain certain dietary restrictions. And others uh, would say, no, uh, food is given to us by God. We're to receive it with thanksgiving. And, and there are a host of questions, some less important, some more important. But uh, I want to read what Paul says about these types of disagreements. He says, one man regards one day above another. Another regards every day alike. Let each man be fully convinced in his own mind. Listen to that. Let each man be fully convinced in his own mind. Compare, contrast that with Galatians 1. If if anyone comes teaching a gospel contrary to this, let him be accursed. You see, uh, we're not dealing with things, uh, uh, we're not dealing with the uh, doctrines of salvation. We're dealing with other issues. And in these other issues, let each man be convinced in his own mind. Now, in the text in Romans there, we see that there are right and wrong answers to those questions. There are right and wrong answers. But the right and wrong answers are not as important as how we treat the other person. Uh, going on there in Romans 14th, the 10th, uh, 14th chapter, the 10th verse. But you, why do you judge your brother? Because he's holding this view. Or again, why do you regard your brother with contempt? Because he's holding this view. For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of God. Now, when, as, as these doctrinal differences, uh, as we try to work through these things, uh, we can see that it's far more important how we treat the other person. Because we're going to all face God someday, and he's going to say, why were you condemning my son? because he held this view. Why were you looking down on my son or daughter? Because they held this view. Uh, I don't think we want to you know, go there. Now, <clears throat> we don't have any discussions that I know of, disagreements going on within the doctrinal disagreements going on with what foods we can eat or what days uh, we need to worship on or what days are holy and not holy. But uh, there are many uh, important disagreements within the church today. And I and you, we all have probably uh, opinions on some of these matters. And we all probably have tried to bring our opinions or to go to God's word and, and uh, test our opinions in it. <clears throat> At least that's the way we should be doing it. But uh, I want to read, before we go any further, uh, a verse, well, probably a lot of people in this room I know can quote it. It's uh, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter and the second verse. If I have the gift of prophecy and know all mysteries and have all knowledge, in all faith, so as I can remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. 
So you see, it's uh, when we come to these discussions, you can have all the knowledge in, in the world, but if you don't have love, uh, that's not impressing God. He wants us to have love in, as we work through some of these uh, disagreements. Uh, one of the disagreements that is uh, in the church today, doctrinal disagreements, is over the nation, over the notion of is there something in the scriptures where uh, we can look forward to an actual kingdom in Israel, Jeru Jerusalem as a uh, capital that will last a thousand years. Now that may not seem important to you. It's important to a lot of people. And over the years, and by the way, I have a very strong opinion on that, uh, but uh, I'm not here to, to discuss my strong opinion on that. I'm here to discuss how we handle disagreements within the church over matters like this. Um, there was a character back in the early days of the church called Justin Martyr. And he was teaching and preaching uh, probably 70 years after Jerusalem had been destroyed after Israel as a nation had been disbanded by the Romans. Justin Martyr believed that the Old Testament scriptures taught that the Jews would come back together at the end of time and form a nation and that uh, Christ would return, that this nation would last a thousand years. Many of Justin Martyr's contemporaries sought, said no. Uh, the Jews rejected Christ. There's nothing left for the Jews in, in prophecy, but all those promises that were to the Jews are now for the church. We are the believing Israel. And this controversy raged quite a bit in the first century and second centuries. But as, as, the, uh, as the years piled up, when, at, when there was no nation of Israel, the argument kind of swung over to this side that says, no, there's nothing for the Jews. Justin Martyr was a, he was a believer that, that there was a, going to be a rebuilt Israel that Christ would rule from it for 1,000 years. And he said this. Oh, and by the way, Justin Martyr's teacher was John the Revelator's pupil. The guy that wrote the book of Revelation. The guy that wrote the book of Revelation thought, according to his student who told Justin Martyr, that Christ was going to return and set up a nation for the Jews that would last a thousand years. So the guy has some chops. He has some reasons for believing what he thinks. But listen to Justin Martyr. Uh, he believed in the restoration of the nation of Israel and the rebuilding of Jerusalem. And then he said, not all pure and pious Christians hold this view. What an attitude. He had strong reasons to hold his position. His teacher was a student of John the Revelator, the guy that wrote several of the books here. And yet, he was humble, he was gracious, he was loving. Many pious, pure believers don't agree with me. Okay? Good job, Justin Martyr, right? That's wonderful. Has the church always given us great examples like Justin Martyr? Unfortunately, no. Ever hear about a guy in history called Copernicus? 
Copernicus realized uh, through observation in mathematics that, Earth, that the Earth orbited the Sun. Prior to his work, many people thought that the Earth, well, I think most people thought that the Earth was the center of the universe. Everything revolves around the Earth. That's what they thought. Now, why would they think that? It's very simple. You step out there in the morning and you watch, up comes the sun, goes overhead, goes down here, up pops the, the stars. They're all going around us. From, from, a, from our little perspective here, standing on Earth, we're the center of the universe. Well, Copernicus says, no, we're not the center of the universe. Now, it doesn't seem like I think he probably had to be there in those days when this conflict was raging, was raging to understand uh, how threatened uh, elements of the church were by this. Because the, this discovery was seen by many as threatening the view that man was God's preeminent creation, which the Bible tells us that he is. Uh, because in their minds, it's shoveling, it was shuffling mankind out of the center of the universe into a secondary, less important place in God's creation. And they poured over their scriptures because these men believed that this was the word of God and this contained the truth about everything. And they came up with a number of... Uh, scriptures. Um, how about this one? The Bible tells us in many places we hear verses like this, from the rising of the sun even to its setting my name will be great among the nations. And the church took those words to try to prove something that text wasn't talking about. That text was talking uh, about God's preeminent place in all of the nations, that there would always uh, uh, his, his great name would be honored, set apart among the nations. And they took that and said, well, that scripture says the sun rises and it sets. So obviously, the Bible says we're the center of the universe. It's obvious. And they didn't, I wish they had left it go at that, but they took that dispute out of uh, the context of a place like Romans 14, where let each man be convinced in his own mind. And they forced that into the context of the Galatian verse. If any man teach a gospel different than this, let him be accursed. And they followed it up with action. There were Christian people who believed that this was the word of God and who said, you know what? It's true. Copernicus is right. Many of those people were killed by the church. Many of those people were burned alive. You know what? I was just looking yesterday, so I brought it along with me today. This is my uh, hunting regulations for the state of Wisconsin. And in here it gives me hunting hours. It says times listing, listed in the hunting hours tables are one half hour before sunrise to 20 minutes after sunset. Wow, the Wisconsin, we're a little bit behind things. Because Copernicus caught, taught us way back when that 
The sun doesn't orbit the earth. And here we are in 19, what, what, well, no, it's 20. <laughs> Who's behind the times? Here we are in our day and age, and we still use phrases like that. Now, why do we use phrases like that? We're not trying to describe a scientific fact. We are merely describing the universe as we see it from our perspective. The sun seems to rise. We don't think of ourselves as tumbling over <laughs> as the earth is spinning toward the east. We don't think of that. Uh, but we all understand that we're not making a scientific statement about who orbits who when we say the rising in the sun. Well, eventually, of course, the church had to admit that they were wrong. Didn't change the fact that a lot of good people who believed this Bible were cooked, were burned. How important is it? How important is it that uh, we understand that if we have the gift of prophecy, able to understand all mysteries, able to have all knowledge about all these various things, all these various issues, and have not love, God's not impressed. I believe there were some good men in those days who felt, so th who felt threatened by uh, this teaching that seemed to go against, to seem to put a man out of his place as revealed in scripture as the preeminent expression of God's creation. And they felt threatened. And they went here and they used verses that were not written to be a scientific expression of how the solar system works but merely an expression of how we experience life daily. Don't you wish the church had done better on that one? I do. I just cringe. And what a shameful legacy for those that follow. We, uh, the church is still laughed at today for its... I don't know, head in the sand, um, just unwilling, unyielding, hateful, murderous. Don't you wish someone had stood up and said, you know what, guys? Uh, I believe that this Bible teaches that, uh, uh, you know, man is God's preeminent creation. But you know what? Uh, it seems to me that uh, the math and observation shows that actually we are at the center of the universe. But I know there are many good and godly men out there that disagree with me. Don't you wish that had been the attitude that carried the day? I believe that attitude was out there and those people were cooked. It's a shame. It's a horrible shame. The, those in power in the church at that time believed that they were capitulating to man's science if we were to accept this notion that the earth uh, orbited the sun. They believed that they were, would be capitulating to man's science rather than to their interpretation of what this book says. And that's not a good thing to do. It's not a good thing to capitulate to uh, naturalistic science if we are convinced that it uh, goes against what this says. But my goodness, how horrible that at the end of, of that period of time in history that the church 
looked so terrible in the eyes of the whole world. Now we have today, uh, I'm going to bring it up to date, and this is going to, let's get it real uncomfortable, shall we? <laughs> I know I'm going to be. <laughs> We're going to bring it up to date. We have another huge controversy in the church about the meaning of the word yom, or yom, in the first chapter of Genesis. It's a huge debate. A lot of people are very passionate on both sides of this issue. Uh, was the earth created in six 24-hour days? Was the earth, as, as one side says, was the earth created in six periods of time, as the other side says? Now, here's the trick. Here's the trick. Scott, the reason why this is such a debate by, right now, by the way, is because of uh, things like uh, evolution, which, you know, which is uh, seen as threatening to a lot of people, um, seen as uh, absolutely ridiculous to a lot of other people. Before there was the issue of uh, evolution, before we came up with this stuff, before science came up with the Big Bang, the black holes, before any of this, there were scholars of the Old Testament, Jewish scholars, that believed that that Old Testament that they had in their hands was the Word of God revealed word of God. It was true. And many of them believed that those days mentioned in uh, Genesis there were 24-hour days. Many of them believed uh, that you, that just not there, that may be your preferred view, but it's not there. That word can have a range of meanings. In the early church, our early church fathers, fathers, right from the beginning, there were many who uh, taught that this was a probably a 24-hour period these days. There were many right from the beginning. Before we had the issue of evolution, before we had the issue of Big Bang or any of this, there were many right from the beginning that said, no, this could just as easily be translated as periods of time. Now, I'm not going to take it, I'm not going to get into that issue other than to say the important thing to me, and I think church history shows it, is how do you treat the people? What do you think of the people that you disagree with? Now, is this, I believe this is an issue that uh, should be worked out in the context of that 14th chapter of Romans. Let every man uh, be uh, satisfied in his own mind that, uh, that he is following God as hard as he can on this issue, that he is not relating his uh, opinions uh, as a concession to science or a concession to anything else. That, that he is looking over the scriptures and he's trying to determine what does God say. Let every man be uh, content that, uh, you know, this is, this is what he's after. Let each man be fully convinced in his own mind. But people on one side or the other are continually trying to take this issue and not deal with it in the context of the 14th chapter of Romans. They're trying to deal with it in the context of the first chapter in Galatians. If any man teach anything different than what I'm telling you, let him be accursed. I, I was listening to a um, debate uh, between uh, young earth creationists and old earth 
creationists. The interesting thing, they were all believers that this is God's word. And they all believed that they were supporting their position from this book. Um, the moderator tried several times to get Ken Ham, who was uh, speaking for the young earth creation, to acknowledge that he was in the room in a discussion with fellow believers because they, had, they believed that Jesus Christ died on the cross for their sins. And you know what? Disappointingly, Ken Ham would not acknowledge them as brothers. What's going on? Where is that incredible spirit that Justin Martyr displayed when he said, look, I, I, I'm, I'm two guys away from the, from the apostle John who wrote this book. And this is what John thought. I know that because my teacher was his student, and he told me this is what John thought. He didn't rage on that and say, you guys need to get in line because uh, if you don't, you're out, you know, you're out. You're out in the back 40 someplace. Instead, he said, this is what I believe. There are many good and godly men who don't agree with me. That's the important attitude in these discussions. And I'm not minimizing the importance of these discussions. I think they are important. And I'm in there. I have my opinions, and I defend my opinions. But when we start refusing to see guys who believe they are following this book and actually can show you uh, millennium worth, millennium's worth of scholars who say we cannot prove that yom means 24 hours then we need to give a little break here. Now, maybe some, someday, I can't imagine what it would take, but maybe someday, uh, like when Copernicus came up with his uh, understanding, which tr proved to be true, Maybe someday this will all become clear to us, whether that is a 24-hour period where young creationism is the, is the thing or whether an older creation is the thing. Maybe someday that will come very clear to us. And when that day occurs, if it occurs before, before Christ comes, let's not have uh, blood on our hands. Let's not hear... Our Lord, who died for us, when we stand before him, say, why did you judge your brother? Why did you disqualify him? Why did you stand there and refuse to acknowledge him as your brother over this issue? Or why did you look down on your brother in, in, in contempt? Why did you think he was stupid? because of his opinion on this issue. He was reading his Bible. He was doing the best that us weak people can do. Are there, tr is one of those, when you've got two opposite thoughts, one of them may be true. They're both not true, I can tell you that. They can, they can both be false, or one of them can be true. But they're both not true because they're, they're conflicting teachings. But you win, regardless of which, where you take, what place you take here, you win if you love your brothers and sisters because of what Christ has done in them. They are 
You're mine. And I refuse to tell you, to disqualify you for, uh, for belief in this gospel over something that is not central to the gospel, essential to the gospel. I'm kind of beaten on this too long, so we're going to go on. If I have the gift of prophecy and know all mysteries and all knowledge and do not have love, I am nothing. So, will you be courageous? Will you and I stand and say, now this is what I believe on that subject, and this is why I believe it. Here is my faith. And will I then say, and you know what? I believe it, but there's a lot of guys out there, good and godly men that I respect, who don't see it this way. You know, I can, you can go on the Internet uh, in any time you want, and there are sites out there where these issues are at loggerheads. And you can find lists, lists of people that believe this or that. And amongst those, you can find some people on that list who believe this, but believe the text allows for either. What a nice place to be. What a place of, of grace and love. I'm not telling you that you shouldn't be going hard after these issues. We should. If they're, if they're meaningful to us, we should. But I am saying to you, uh, let's be courageous. Let's be loving like Justin Martyr. Let's say, this I believe, but there are many good and godly men who don't hold this opinion. Can we do that? I think we can. Actually, I, I think we really need to because we don't want to fracture this beautiful thing called Christ Church. Foundation Bible Church, inconveniently located two blocks northwest of the Janesville Athletic Club.